Minnesota headwaters to the Gulf of Mexico, the ground runs with water. The long grip of winter is broken. But north, far north of here, a colder, slower spring comes to the northern wilderness, to the source of the river, Lake Itasca. And here, with the Minnesota spring, a story begins which traces the mighty course of the Mississippi itself. But it begins here, where the river begins, with a mailbox on a lonely north country road, and a farm boy who had faith in winds and river currents, and something more, faith in people along the Mississippi. a little boat, and with it his big winter dreams. Do you think it'll make it? He asked his brother Hans. Will people be too busy to bother with it? Few people will see it at first. Deer or beaver may note its silent passage through their forest, or perhaps a turtle. Then through desolate cut over timberlands, and then miles down the river through rapids. flowing south, south down the great river valley, the American heartland, 2,400 wandering miles to go before it reaches the river's end and waiting hands at the Gulf of Mexico. Well, it might. Oh, it couldn't. Not in a thousand years. It could. You mean, if you're up where the Mississippi begins and you send something down, it get all the way here to the Gulf? It might, too. But now it rests in a Minnesota thicket. Who knows who might help it on its way? spot in the river when it happened. There was the Mississippi. It had been floating there all the time we were playing cowboys and Indians. Of course, none of us are real cowboys around here, but we're real honest to goodness Indians. Chippeway. Like my grandmother now. She speaks only Chippeway, and she wishes I spoke it more than I do. She calls me say, which means he walks in the noon. But I have an American name, too, and a bicycle. Just like other kids. I'd be playing baseball right now, except I have to take my father's lunch to him. He's a lumberjack, drives a tractor in the timber. Saturday afternoon's our day to go to town. I guess it's the same with you, Robert. Anyway, Outside one of the stores on Main Street, 
We got an idea. Well, Robert, we added something new to your boat. A totem pole to guide it safely on its way. And so, bobbing its thanks upon every wave, the Mississippi leaves its Chippeway friends. And after days or weeks, leaves the North Country wilderness. Now, strange new sights. Power lines and tall bridges spanning the river. Industries making important noises along the bank frowning down upon our tiny craft. Bustling cities, Crow Wing, Brainerd, Little Falls, and at last the first river giants, Minneapolis and St. Paul. where your little boat is now. It's sailing in a river that's busy with towboats and barges and great dredges that dig away year after year, keeping the channel open for navigation. This is the river I know, for I am a river captain. And here's how I first saw your little boat, the Mississippi. Hey, look at that. They had found it, Robert, just about the time my towboat was ready to shove off downriver. My daughter, Tina, and her friend, Bill, had come down to see me off. Oh, hi, Captain. I said goodbye to them, but although I didn't know it then, I didn't say goodbye to your boat, for Tina and Bill had a plan. All right, cast off. Well, Robert, that's how your vessel got tied on mine. Anyway, you're welcome to tag along with us down to St. Louis, down one of the richest river valleys in the world. You are going down with a freight train of the river, a towboat. Besides your little boat, we are navigating a string of oil barges wider and longer than the Queen Mary. Our first stop, by the way, will be La Crosse, Wisconsin. One of our crew members, Pete Shaw, is getting married there. Pete claims he's not nervous, but I've got an idea he's doing a pretty good job of covering up. Here's the lock where Pete gets off. Pete comes from Arkansas. He's a long way from home. Pete told me about the wedding afterwards, how everything Karen pointed out to him seemed strange. The rolling countryside, the way they farmed, and the names of the people whose farms they passed, Svensson, Bergstrom, and Holmquist. Karen never guessed it, but the sight of a Wisconsin dairy farm made Pete long to see cotton growing in Arkansas. And then, Karen's home. Pete felt like a stranger, and wondered what was in store for him. There hadn't been many people at the wedding, he told me. Yes, he figured people just weren't very friendly in that part of the country. But then, all of a sudden... How wrong can you be, Pete One? The people whose names were Bergstrom and Holmquist and Svensson, in fact, all the neighbors from miles around gave them a real old-fashioned welcome. Pete found out that people in Wisconsin aren't too much different from those in Arkansas. Arkansas. 
But later that night, somewhere down the river from La Crosse, there was a floating uprooted tree. And the line to your boat snapped. Towboat astern! Then, another towboat looming out of the darkness. And that, Robert, was the last we saw of your little boat. I found the Mississippi in our gang swimming hole. It was pretty banged up, so I decided to take it home with me. Your name's French, Robert, and mine's German, Hans Kruger. I live on a farm near Guttenberg, Iowa. Most of the people in this part of the country came from Germany a long time ago. German stonemasons built this church we go to. It's about a hundred years old. And you ought to see the riverfront street in Guttenberg. My great-grandmother says it looks just like a little German town. But you can't prove it by me. The country near the river is one hill after another. But it's some of the best farming land in Iowa. That's something I do know about. I just got home in time that day I found your boat. It was Saturday. And just about every Saturday, our family goes to Dubuque. My mother was going shopping. But my dad and I, we were going to sell Frida. Frida's a heifer, you see, and a heifer's a young cow that hasn't had a calf yet. Anyway, Frida was on her way to the Dubuque auction bar. Five, 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 now, sixty, six, and now, five, eight. Right, five, get me, five, six, five, now, seven, get to get seven, five, I'm gonna get seven, eight. That's seven and a half, now, seven, eight. Eight, seven, dollars, get to get seven, five, I'm gonna get seven, dollars, get to get seven, eight, get seven, eight. Eight, seven, eight, two and a half, get to get two and a half, two and a half, and five. That's in the five, get to get five, seven, five, and eighty. That's in the five, get to get eight. Five, and a half, five, and a half, five, 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 all right, boys, we got a good drove of steers here. Now, where do you want to start them at, Bob? What's the money on them? Good load of herfords here, Freddy. Hi, Hans. What you got? Okay. A boat? Not much of a boat. Not worth trading for anything. That's all you know. Came all the way down from the beginning of the Mississippi River. Almost a thousand miles. It did? Let's see. Yeah. Let's see it. Yeah, let's see it. Boy, look at that. Wonder how long it's taken to get here. Hans, I'll trade you my pocket knife for it. Uh-uh. Okay, I'll throw in this. That's a neat compass. Sure is, Hans. Hey, why not put it on the boat? You mean put my compass on your boat? Sure, boat needs a compass, doesn't it? Gee, Terry, if you put it on, it'll sort of be your boat, too. And it'll help it go in the right direction. All right, let's go get it fixed up. Well, that's how it was, Robert. We all went over to the Dubuque shipyard, where they built big river barges and towboats. Going to the yard... Hey, where do you kids think you're going? Boy, were we scared. I told him about your boat, that we just put a compass on it and wanted to launch it. Okay, fellas, go ahead. Hey, thanks, mister. Yeah, thanks. I wonder where it'll go now. It has come from the Minnesota headwaters to St. Paul. From St. Paul to La Crosse, Wisconsin River City. From La Crosse to Dubuque on Iowa shores. And at last, St. Louis, largest river city of them all. Nerve center of the modern river, but city of century old levees. Here, the Mississippi pauses, but not for long. A little girl whose great-grandparents journeyed overland in a covered wagon ties a toy packet in tow. A dime store reminder of the river Tom Sawyer knew. Now, from St. Louis on down, the levied river of small southern towns, of cotton, Scorching summer sun of yearly flood. Hey, what's that down there? Dear Robert Bigra, that was the first time my friend Paul and I saw your boat. 
We tried to get it, but the levee dropped off too steep, and the current was taking it away. The river was pretty high for that time of the year. There were flood warnings out. The crest was supposed to reach our town the next day. We watched it till it disappeared, and then said goodbye to each other. Paul and I had always been good friends, ever since we were real young. But lately, we hadn't been seeing too much of each other. Just happened to meet on the levee that day, the day the flood took your boat away. It's hard work keeping the waters back. Sometimes it comes almost up to the street signs. But this year, it wasn't too bad, except for down by the river. Hardly came up to the third step of my house. And then the water went down pretty quick. And in a few days, you'd hardly know there'd been a flood at all. I'm a statue. I'm a statue, Robbie. Come Who on, you can swing me harder than that. But you're come too on, heavy, come on, come Robbie. on. Come on, swing me, swing me. Swing me real fast. Who am I, Robbie? Who I'll am I? You all right there. Look at Robbie go, would you? Hey, look at me. Who am I? I'm next, Bob. I'm next. Well, gee whiz. Believe it or not, there was your boat again, Robert. I was so surprised I ran all the way across town to where Paul lives. Hey, Paul! Where are you? Hey, Paul! What's up? Come here and see what I got. What is it? Come here and see. Gee whiz. How did you get the boat? Flood washed it right up on my front porch. Let's go launch it, Paul. Paul, well, come on. Aren't you going to play? I'm sorry, Robbie, but I'm playing a game right now. Some other time. That's why Paul and I are writing this letter to you. You see, Robert, we thought you'd like to know how your boat sort of brought two old friends back together again. But there will be days when the vast lower river will seem without end. Memphis, Vicksburg, Natchez, and at last, with luck, New Orleans. Great trading and manufacturing center. River port and port of the world. Freighters loading for Brazil, Java, the Indies. And it will be here that our tiny craft will need all the luck in the world. And its luck will hold. Thrown up by a paddle wheel. Carried down river, where, free once more, it drifts off course into a mysterious land of moss on trees, of Cajun boys with French names like Villiers, Duchesne, Oma, moving silently through a Louisiana bayou. And here, too, our boat will need luck. What's that over there, Jean? It's a little boat. What's it say in the sail? Down the Mississippi. Down the Mississippi? It's off course. I wonder how it... Jean, look out! Gators! <laughs> And its luck will continue in a lonely tidal bay. Pretty good cast, Pierre. Best of all, look what we caught. <laughs> well, he's way off course. We'll see that he gets back. But on its way to the South Pass, the channel to the sea, it passes a Gulf shrimp fleet running before a storm warning. A tropical hurricane. And now it lies landlocked and lost, 
at Land's End. Lost and unnoticed for days, or weeks, or months. But then... Dear Robert Beegrass, I just knew it could happen. of letters by now, Robert, and maybe ours won't be the last, for we've painted a new message on your sail, around the world. From a little boy in Minnesota to people along the Mississippi, and here at the river's end to the peoples of the world. Now where is it bound, and who will bring it ashore?